Welcome to part eight of the complete course on Sentinel-1 endpoint detection and response. And so today we're gonna to be digging into the, let me go ahead and change screen here. This is the activity. So we've covered all of these, so make sure you go back. If you have not watched the old series, go back and watch it. This is not for entertainment, but this is telling you comprehensively what you should want, like what the console and what the many other things to do. And if I get a few things wrong, let me know in the comments and I'll fix it, okay? So we're gonna deal with the activity tab today. And essentially this is more like an audit log of like everything that's happening within the Sentinel-1 console. And let me turn my webcam on. There we go, okay. So this is comprehensively everything that's happening within the console. So that means we got everything from, and I've turned these off because once again, these do so, show some information like public IP addresses. So, you know, when we performed actions, it would show my IP address and those different things here. But we will start with here, like agent decommission. That means we basically hide the agent um, so that it can no longer be seen in the console for agents that may not necessarily come back, uh, may not be, like they're, they're uh, either the computer's been formatted, computer's shut down, the computer's destroyed or something like that. So you, it's a way of hiding in the console. And Pierre, we talked about this being agents recommissioned. By the way, I have Pierre from the Cybersecurity Mentorship Program for Technology Interpreters in here. So remember, so if, if you take your computer and you decommission it, but that computer for some reason is not damaged and maybe they just had it shut down in the storage closet and they fire back up, then it will recommission yourself. And Pierre, this is where you want to go to see if that happens, okay? All right. All right, agent subscribed. Like, I don't know, some of these categories I've not dealt with, like benchmarking. Device control, that's like when the USB, you know, draw, when, when the, the uh, policy set to block USB drives and, and Bluetooth and stuff like that. That's what those are, but you take, here's a good example. So like, if I'm doing troubleshooting, I may disable the agent and re-enable it. So. I'll scroll through some of the categories so you can hear, you can see some of the things that are in here because essentially like you'll see all these events. And so I just want you to kind of see, it's really simple. So a couple of ways you can filter through here. Well, I just showed everybody's email address. Well, I don't want to <laughs> click on that one. Guess I'm going to have to put a blur on the screen for that one. <laughs> but um, so, but you can also, let's see, we got malware. And so for malware options, we've got cloud marked as threat. Um, that was interesting. Not haven't haven't come across that one as much my, mitigated. I do know that new custom rule alert. Well, so we we that's pretty self-explanatory. Not mitigated and then preemptively mitigated. I just don't want to dig into these, but either way, these are just the different statuses as you can see. I'm typically used to seeing mitigated, not mitigated, um, uh, and that's on the malware category. Under the mitigation category, you can see what was killed, quarantine, re remote, remediated, roll back shut down on quarantine so those are some of the mitigation events that you can perform and then you can look at threat management so analysis verdict and we covered all of these or many of these in previous videos so you can see marked as suspicious marked as a threat notes so we can see all the notes when, or who added notes and then xdr action i think extensive uh detection and extended detection and response or something like that i think it's xdr please correct me feel free to correct me in the, com in the comments Exclusion, so you can see deleted browser exclusion, exclusions or file type exclusions. And these are basically like, uh, for instance, if there's a program that you don't want Sentinel-1 to act on, you put in an exclusion. And then say, for instance, I don't need that exclusion anymore, or I put it in incorrectly, I can delete it. Either way, the audit laws will show that I'm adding an exclusion. Say, for instance, I wanted to run a malicious piece of software, and I'm an inside employee that's doing bad stuff. Maybe I'll put in an exclusion so that the bad guy software can actually run, right? But the thing is, or a bad person, right? But the thing is, uh, if you do that, it does show up in auto logs and people like myself or administrators can come back and read it, like read this. So deleted hash block list. So if you put a block in, we all talked about that under the end, I'm sorry, the Sentinels tab. That's where all of these things came from new immune. So that's, those are some things I haven't seen before in logs or come across. Uh, new edit block list. We know what that is. New modify browser exclusion. So those are pretty straightforward. And then we can get into the operations, right? So 2FA configure. So a whole bunch of things we can see recovery, email added. So this is some of the stuff like that, you know, basically about securing the environment, right? Or your user accounts, really. That's what it's about. Your user accounts more specifically. AD configuration, agent updates, Agent reset local config. So this is a lot of stuff. Agent up, auto upgrade policy create. So, and these are self-explanatory. Change my password. Password expired. Forgot my password. So we can see people making password changes. 
uh enable api token generation this is one by default maybe you why would you want to look at this is because maybe somebody can create an api key and then they can use the api to get in your sentinel one environment and be able to snoop around and see all kind of stuff and you never know it because they never technically logged in using uh the interface but if you're not looking for this api token generation event or uh something like that then you'll miss it right so the bottom line is they don't need to, let me make sure i explain this because somebody did make some good comments so i don't want it to be confusing uh, somebody can, like you can determine whether or not somebody can or cannot make an api and what the nefarious person will be doing is essentially create an api that they could then give to somebody else and they can use to that to connect so you really do want to monitor who's creating apis firewall control like rules created in settings that's a whole section that actually integrates with firewalls uh for instance in one live security policy inherits a lot local upgrade uh authorization expiry uh, so haven't used that one as much you can see what locations login settings we can see that password expiration policy change role-based access control uh administration so basically assigning different roles and you can assign roles within sentinel one uh if i sent a rebit the onboarding email like when you get ready to start, sign into sentinel one there's an email that you send out that the user has to click on to go through the onboarding process. So what if I wanted to see, like, what if somebody were, uh, see, uh, you mind muting your mic, Daniel? Sorry, you coming in a little with a frying, frying pan in the kitchen. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to mute Daniel. You need to see he came in in the video recording and frying like chicken. All right, so anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, script deleted, right? So you can add scripts in the, I think that's more in the, uh, the automation settings if i delete those scripts i think that's where that shows up so tags we know we can create tags you can do that under the sentinel section uh tag removed uh, a lot of options there user onboarding user modified the user login so lots of categories there so that's all up under the administration uh and then well was that operation or i think i was on no that's all up under operations administration yep. is agent decommission we talked a little bit about that in the beginning you can do full disk scan you want to know when people do that like essentially they've done just about everything uh re randomized uuid so remember i told you agents have a unique identifier but maybe i cloned it i create an image of a computer and i duplicated id so i can randomize to create a new mm -hmm. uuid moving it to another console wait what if i want to move your computers out of my console into my into my bad person console right i can do a migration if i work if i work for your company and i create my own console i can maybe do a migration and then turn the policies off and then do all kind of nefarious stuff like remote in and by the way remote shell is one of these options i forgot it's probably under some of the threat categories but you can remote in and you will see every time somebody remotes into somebody's computer and then these detection rules, if you're creating detection rules, uh, don't know a lot about that, haven't created any detection rules so far. Don't know if that's available in our main console. And then of course you can filter by date. And that's the thing. A lot of times when it comes to security, you really wanna think about it like this. You don't wanna just search. You wanna be able to narrow it down to the smallest group possible and then be able to search from that group. So if I know an event takes place on this day, at this time, then you see you can use dates and times in the console. And so basically, I'm gonna start, okay, I'm gonna put the, the the start time before the event happened, the end time after the event happens. And then sometimes I may need to add a little bit more space before or after or both. And so that was the way you can kind of like use this, this automation console to see it. And then of course, I just wanna mention through Sentinel One, you have an export, like, like an export button on just about everything. And then finally, uh, you can see right here we actually have a download button let's see you can actually download the threats i believe that's what that is for so if you click on that see it goes to my blank desktop destiny to shortcut and you see it looks like quarantine report for the coupon so that looks like it's a report oh it's essentially downloading a report but i think there's a section here we can actually download the threat so uh pierre so the, since this was actually pretty straightforward do you have any questions? We're only at nine minutes, so we'll do about 30 seconds of questions here. Anything for no. you? No, I don't have any specific question when it comes to the, this area. Mm -hmm. I know there's it's a lot of, in the activity filter, it's a lot of information in there. The, uh, it's like so much you can do with this this uh, uh, mm -hmm. system that uh, it will take a while for a person to get a fully expert be fully expert with when it comes to uh 
Sentinel One, because it's a yeah. lot of information that you can different areas that you can navigate in this system, and you never you will never fully understand everything. But well, I, yeah. I, I bet I actually counter, I actually challenge that thought because the thing is, I guarantee if you worked in this. And you really like took some time to kind of get to learn, you know, like say I'm covering everything. But if you worked in this, then I guarantee that you'd be pretty, pretty proficient. You may not get it, may not be a complete expert, but mm -hmm. honestly, for somebody who, you know, a lot of times people are going to be working in Sentinel One for more than just six months. They'll be in here for years, sometimes two or three years. So I think, you know, I just don't, don't want to encourage you, know, but yeah, I definitely think that you can become an expert in it. So, so but anyway. That's it. Uh, so uh, for those of you that are watching still, uh, if you're interested in joining the mentorship program like Pierre here, then please don't forget to like check the description of the video. There's a link directly to the mentorship program. If you're interested in, we take you through Sentinel One and uh, Tenable Vulnerability Scanning, uh, PowerShell scripting, shell scripting, the whole nine. We really kind of take you through everything that I kind of really do on a job and my job is I serve as a technical director for a cybersecurity startup. So that means I have pretty big companies and small companies and I literally take them from sometimes nothing all the way through being secure and getting all enterprise level or big company level security installed. So anyway, hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. So don't forget to like and subscribe.